So whatever you're going through or somebody else is going through, God will either give you eventually the answer to get through it or to make your suffering bearable. It's not about us. It's not about you. Jesus was not sick. Jesus was not naked. Jesus was not a criminal. Jesus became one with these people. Jesus associated with the poor, with the criminals, with the undesirables. He likened himself with them, not those who were in good standing. It's easy, like in the story of Job, when one is so blessed to feel a little cocky and righteous and forget that not everyone is as blessed. Luckily for many, they will never have to suffer as horribly as others with experiencing great pain, great illness, great deformity, great bigotry, and the misery of the wrong social standing. Not everyone has to experience what it is like to be someone less fortunate or someone not as physically or mentally perfect as oneself. One does not have to give pity. One does not have to suffer. But one can show compassion for the suffering of others. One can put themselves in the perspective of those who are suffering. Perhaps those people are suffering not unto themselves, maybe not to learn a lesson unto themselves, but for others to learn from them. A person who is born blind does not know the difference of what they are missing because they've never experienced it. One who is deaf is not bitter over the absence of sound because one has never experienced it. One who is different is not different out of choice, but out of circumstance. One does not choose to suffer. And for many, they may not even consider it suffering because it had always been that they don't know what it's like to live without it. It's not for them to learn, but for those in good standing to put themselves into that perspective and to feel that suffering onto themselves who do know. We can put ourselves into perspective of others. It will never be the same as being in that position. But sometimes it benefits us in our humility to take upon ourselves the feeling of suffering from others. How would you feel to be in a position of such desperation that you make an unpleasant choice because it is considered the lesser of two evils? How would you feel to know that your time is much more and that your quality of life may be good but short, or short but extremely uncomfortable. How does it feel to know that the senses you take for granted are not there? How does it feel to be of another race and to feel the judgment and bigotry? How does it feel to fall in love and be told that the most wonderful feeling in the whole world must be a lie? because someone else doesn't like it. How would it feel to be told that you are not allowed to do anything you feel you should do because you are not the right color, because you are not the right orientation, because you are not from the right country, because you are not the right gender. It's very easy to shake your finger and judge, but don't judge thy neighbor. Let he who has never sinned cast the first stone. Why is one suffering more valuable than the other? Why is it when we feel pity, we are willing to try and learn from the disadvantage 
of another. Yet, when we don't like something, we choose to not learn from it. We are blinded from learning what is obviously put before us to learn as a Christian example. If that other person were very obviously Jesus, would you show your compassion and show humility to learn from the disadvantage that he has put himself in willingly for your benefit, for your sake? How do you know that this person is not Jesus for you? How do you not know these situations are put before you as a test for you to show that you would show compassion to Jesus in any form he chose to take? Because unlike that person who may not have chosen their suffering or their disadvantage or their difference to what one considers the proper norm, the desirable norm. Jesus chose to suffer all of these unpleasantries for our sakes. So before one judges, we should think back on that very important quote of Matthew 25, 36. If that person you see is disadvantaged, will you judge or will you show compassion? Will you clothe that person as you would clothe Jesus? If one is sick, temporarily, terminally, physically or mentally, would you judge, would you show vast amounts of pity, or would you cast out superstition? Rather than going to visit and offering acts and words of kindness and encouragement and support as one would do to Jesus if it were Jesus. For those who have fallen short and made mistakes, would one forgive and show compassion or would you judge? One can judge by human standards, that is the nature of law. But would you forever condemn this person's soul if they were to plead genuinely for compassion and forgiveness? Would you deny that of Jesus if he asked that in his moment of weakness? If Jesus were Arabic, Chinese, black, white, Martian, whatever, would you therefore think less of Jesus because he is not the same color as you? Or would you love Jesus regardless of what he looks like? Would you love Jesus despite who he loved? Would you love Jesus if Jesus were a woman? You will always have human standard, that is human behavior. You will always have human law. That is the cost of human civilization. However, this does not mean that we have to be really judgmental and nasty towards others. We do not have to separate ourselves entirely from the suffering. We can enjoy our good blessings, but we should never forget. None of us are better than anyone else. None of us are more proper than the other. We are all our individual circumstances because that is what God decided for us. We are to learn from our suffering and we are to learn from the suffering of others. We should not inflict this suffering onto others. That is not our place. But we must recognize that sometimes we are not teaching ourselves when we are afflicted with something that is not the desirable norm. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it is for someone else to learn from us.
sometimes we must seek Jesus to overcome that which we must suffer. For that we must gain the compassion of those who are as compassionate as Jesus would be. Other times we suffer for the benefit of others. Others must learn to look at those who suffer, who may not consider themselves even suffering, but who are less fortunate than others. Because we may be Jesus for someone else, and that person must learn to love and accept that we are as Jesus. Because Jesus became one with those who are socially and societally undesirable in some manner compared to them. So before you judge too harshly someone who is not like you, imagine if that person were Jesus. Would you disregard Jesus because Jesus was not perfect in your eyes if Jesus decided to take on that suffering, that experience? We say that Jesus is perfect. For our sakes, yes, but for our sakes, he also likened himself with the lowest and the undesirable. If we want to be like Jesus, we should also feel the compassion and learn from these people. We should also think not just what would Jesus do, but what if this person were Jesus?